So recently the ABC published an article discussing tax cuts and, and what the? Do you hear that? Am I, am I going crazy? What the hell? It's time once again for another economic response video. Well, uh, not sure exactly what that was all about. Anyway, Emma Alberici recently published an article attacking proposed tax cuts by Malcolm Turnbull. Emma is the ABC's chief economics correspondent, so you'd think she'd understand economics just a little bit. Apparently not, because the article is full of bad arguments and logical fallacies. It does raise an interesting question, however. Do tax cuts actually result in higher wages and economic growth? In other words, are tax cuts really good for the economy? Today, I'm going to answer that question whilst highlighting yet another example of ABC bias. So sit back, relax, and remember that if you're an Australian taxpayer, you paid for this. The article in question has since been pulled from the ABC's website because it did not meet ABC editorial standards, according to them. I wanted to respond to it anyway because the world needs to know how horribly biased the taxpayer-funded ABC really is. They only removed it after political pressure after all. This individual is the top economics commentator at the ABC, and she produced one of the most biased and poorly researched articles ever produced by it. She also doesn't understand economics at all. I would have thought this was part of the job description, but what do I know? Thankfully, the internet is forever, and somebody put it up on their blog before it was taken down. Many thanks to johnmenadieu.com. I have no idea who you are or what you believe, but this was useful. It starts off beautifully. There is no case for a corporate tax cut when one in five of Australia's top companies don't pay it. Right off the bat, we have one of the dumbest headlines in the history of headlines. Companies only pay corporate tax on profit. So if one in five aren't paying corporate tax, it's because they aren't making any money or they are offsetting previous losses. Remember, this is the chief economics correspondent at the ABC. There is no compelling evidence that giving the country's biggest companies a tax cut sees that money passed on to workers in the form of higher wages. The second line is about as bad as the first. We actually do know that lowering corporate taxes results in higher wages. In fact, there have been numerous studies across the world that have shown this to be the case. Here is a study from the German Institute of Labor Economics. We find that a 1% increase in the corporate tax rate leads to a 0.3 to 0.5% decrease in wages. This implies that for every individual tax euro a firm has to pay, the wage bill declines by 44 to 77 cents. And another from the American Enterprise Institute for Public Policy Research. Using panel data for 72 countries and 22 years, we explore the link between taxes and manufacturing wages. We find that wages are significantly responsive to corporate taxation, and that responsiveness of wages to corporate taxation is larger in smaller countries. And another from the National Foundation for American Policy. A new analysis shows US metropolitan areas with lower taxes exhibit higher employment growth, faster population growth, and greater increases in real personal income than areas with higher tax burdens. 
These findings are particularly relevant at a time when many states and cities are proposing to raise taxes to address short and long-term budget problems. This research found areas with higher taxes had lower employment growth, smaller personal income gains, and slower growth of population. So contrary to her claim in literally the first line of her article, corporate tax rates do have an inverse effect on wages. I'll remind you, this is the top level economics reporter at our billion dollar state funded media station. Moving on. Since the peak of the commodities boom in 2011 and 12, profit margins have risen to levels not seen since the early 2000s. But wage growth has been slower than at any time since the 1960s. This is a funny line because the headline says one in five companies don't pay tax, which we now know is purely because they aren't making a profit. So which is it, Emma? Are they making money hand over fist or are they not making enough to pay tax? She even throws in a little graph she generated, which I found amusing. It compares wages growth to profit growth. We can see that wages growth has dropped steadily since 2007. Growth in profit has dropped steadily since a peak in growth around 2001 and saw a big jump in 2017. I guess that's what all the fuss is about. Companies making money must be bad or something. I'll just point out that the media has been reporting on a jobs boom over the last 12 months. Notice how the graph she uses ends in 2016. I wonder why that is. She continues. It's also disingenuous to talk about a 30% rate when so few companies pay anything like that thanks to tax legislation that allows them to avoid paying corporate tax. For the sake of argument, let's ignore the fact that companies pay capital gains tax, fringe benefits tax, goods and services tax, pay as you go tax, payroll tax, various stamp duties, land tax, and a host of other taxes like alcohol tax, fuel excise, and more. Instead, we can focus on the claim that these companies are using legislation to avoid income tax. What she doesn't mention is that the way business avoids tax is by claiming business expenses as deductions. From business.gov.au, you may be able to claim deductions for your business if your business has motor vehicle expenses, uses diesel fuel, is based at your home, has website expenses, has travel expenses, uses plants such as machinery, tools or computers. So when she says companies can avoid tax, what she really means is companies can claim legitimate business expenses the same way as any small business in almost any developed or developing nation around the world. Chief Economics Correspondent, everyone. Chief Economics Correspondent. She ends this section with a gem. And while the Treasurer and Finance Minister warn that Australia's relatively high headline corporate tax rate means Australia remains uncompetitive and companies will choose to invest in lower taxing countries, the facts don't bear that out. Business investment in Australia has been at historically high levels over much of the past decade despite our comparatively high headline corporate tax rate. What the? You mean corporate tax rate isn't the only thing companies look at? Well, damn, I guess we can all go home now. Tax rates don't matter because Emma said so. Could it be that Australia still has one of the highest economic freedom scores regardless of our high taxes? Nah, not possible. How could that be when we have a straw man to set up? Hey, Emma. Just because businesses still want to invest despite our high tax rates doesn't mean high tax rates are a good idea. Duh. Funnily enough, she brings this up in the next section, unable to see the irony. There's more to investment than corporate taxes. Before Donald Trump cut the US corporate tax rate earlier this year, it was 5 to 9 percentage points higher than Australia's. That hasn't deterred Australian companies from seeking opportunities in America instead of Ireland, where the corporate tax rate is less than half of ours, 12.5%, or Singapore, 17%. Interesting she brings up Ireland. She must have missed this article from Far Left Rag, the left appendant. Ireland's economy grows 26.3% in 2015 as corporations flock to low tax rate. And from Forbes, low tax rates work then. Irish GDP growth at 5.8% could increase to 7%.
So Ireland dropped its corporate tax rate dramatically and saw a boom in investment. It's almost like businesses prefer low taxing nations or something. She then repeats the same hilarious stupidity from before. Tax rates don't matter if you're not paying tax. High profile chief executives like Qantas chief Alan Joyce are adamant that investment decisions rest largely on the rate of a country's corporate tax. But it's hard to see how a lower tax rate is an incentive for investment when one in five of our biggest companies haven't paid any corporate tax at all in the last three years. So aside from the fact that we know without a doubt that lower taxes increase business investment, she repeats the same garbage from before about one in five businesses not paying tax. Again, they do pay tax as I mentioned, but even if corporate income tax was the only tax they ever paid, the only reason they'd pay zero tax is because they didn't make any money. Hey, business penguin, hand it over. But I didn't make any money this year. I had to pay all my employees. There was none left over for me. You think I care? Hand over the loot or I'll break your kneecaps. <laughs> Just take my car and leave me alone. I'm moving to the Pigeon Islands. Good idea, you bourgeois penguin scum. Moving on. Next up, we get a comparison to Canada. Canada cut its corporate tax rate from 42% in 2000 to about 26% in 2011, where it has remained. In 2000, Australia cut its corporate tax rate from 34% to its present 30%. It is also worth noting that wages have risen by about 20% more, in nominal terms, in Australia than in Canada since 2000, despite Canadian companies having had a much bigger corporate tax cut. Wow, it's almost like there are more factors at play than just corporate tax rates, which is similar to what she said here earlier. Once again, even if wages don't grow at all after a tax cut, that doesn't necessarily mean that tax cuts don't increase wages generally. For example, if the government cut taxes to zero then imported millions of migrants to compete in the jobs market, you probably see a drop in wage growth due to an increased supply of labour. Wait a minute, that's exactly what they did. Do workers really win? The White House claims the recently legislated cut in the US corporate tax rate will translate to higher wages for the average worker of between 4000 and 9000 a year, but there is no credible evidence to support that boast. Aside from the studies presented at the start of this video and the fact that a whole bunch of companies announced bonuses as a direct result of Trump's tax cuts. The headline 30% rate is misleading. Adding to this debate is the issue of average and effective tax rates. Effective tax rates are said to drive investment decisions and take account of what companies actually pay once deductions, depreciation and other tax minimization strategies are considered. In other words, she argues again that because companies can deduct business expenses, the tax rate is actually a lot lower. This is just nonsense because again, the cost of doing business is the cost of doing business, and this argument doesn't counter the claim that lower taxes mean more investment and economic growth. Which leads into the next section, do tax cuts boost investment? This is the funniest part of the article because she quotes Deloitte Access economic spokesperson Chris Richardson who points out that it's a widely accepted theory and brings up treasury modelling then says, in truth, it's hard to find real world evidence to support these economic theories. So the government might be wise to heed the words of Plato. A good decision is based on knowledge and not numbers. Funny, because I already mentioned Ireland as just one example. Here's another study by Laura Dobbins of the Free University of Berlin and Martin Jacob of the Otto Beisham School of Management. We find that the reduction in corporate tax payments led to a one-to-one -one increase in the real investments of domestic firms. The effect is stronger for domestic firms relying on more internal funds. Correspondingly, labour investment increased more for domestic firms, ensuring a constant mix of input factors. In addition, we show that domestic firm sales grew faster after the tax cut than the sales of foreign-owned firms. 
Our results imply that corporate tax changes can increase corporate investment, but that domestic firms benefit more than foreign-owned firms from a tax cut through higher investment responses resulting in greater sales growth. Why do you hate Australian firms, Emma? What did those good old Aussie battlers ever do to you? Here's a few more articles that cite similar studies. A lower corporate tax rate means more growth and higher wages. The high price that American workers pay for corporate taxes. How higher taxes for the rich ultimately hurt the poor. The effect of corporate income tax and payroll taxes on the wage of Canadian workers. Higher corporate taxes mean lower wages for workers and... Here's what happens when we lower corporate tax rates. I'll delve more deeply into this shortly. For now, back to the article. In the next section, she discusses dividend imputation and proves she doesn't understand how franking credits work. Then finishes up with the tiresome claim that tax cuts are actually spending, a nonsense argument based on zero evidence that assumes money earned by private companies is actually the property of the state. For this, I'll just remind Emma that taxation is actually theft and cutting taxes is not spending. Cutting taxes is reducing theft. I even made a poem about it once. I've also written an essay that I'll publish one day and you can stay tuned for my upcoming video, Why Democracy Fails and How to Fix It. Now that we know tax cuts do result in higher wages, and that the ABC's chief economics reporter is an economic illiterate, we can move on to the next part of the question. Do lower taxes result in more growth? When it comes to this question, it can be hard to wade through the BS and propaganda thrown at us by the left-wing press. Outlets like the Huffington Post, Vox and the New York Times consistently push the left-wing view that raising taxes is either not bad or somehow good for the economy. But what's the truth? I touched on it before, but rather than go over all the evidence in detail, I will simply refer to a study completed by William McBride of the Tax Foundation in 2012. This is what they found. Nearly every empirical study of taxes and economic growth published in a peer-reviewed academic journal finds that tax increases harm economic growth. In my review, I examined 26 such studies going back to 1983 as shown in Table 1. All but three of those studies and every study in the last 15 years find a negative effect of taxes on growth. And his conclusion, this review of empirical studies of taxes and economic growth indicates that there are not a lot of dissenting opinions coming from peer-reviewed academic journals. More and more, the consensus among experts is that taxes on corporate and personal income are particularly harmful to economic growth, with consumption and property taxes less so. This is because economic growth ultimately comes from production, innovation and risk-taking. So the vast majority of studies found empirical evidence that lower taxes are good for economic growth. And they also confirmed Say's law. This study was criticized by the Congressional Research Service in their paper, Taxes and the Economy, an economic analysis of the top tax rates since 1945. Several media organizations, including Business Insider Australia, reported on this study. However, they missed a few key points, as the Tax Foundation lays out in their response. Very few taxpayers have incomes that reach the top tax rates, and while these people earn a great deal of money and contribute a great deal to economic output, they still represent a fraction of total economic activity. Other changes in taxes and other influences on the economy occurring at the same time can easily hide or counteract the effect of the top tax rate changes alone. It is often impossible to hold other things constant to allow one to see the impact of the single item one wants to assess. When these other influences are omitted from the model, the missing variable problem poisons the results. And their conclusion? The CRS study emits important variables and poisons its results by not holding other factors constant. 
The variables it does examine are indirectly related to the relationship one should be studying, but the study does not follow them for long enough to get the whole picture. The study is as weak now as it was when it was first issued. Grade F. Ha! Grading in an F was a nice touch, but this is a damning response regardless. When people attack tax cuts, they often cherry pick and use communist talking points like tax cuts for the rich, ignoring the fact that while the rich, or as commies like to call them, the 1%, are often the most productive members of society, they are still only a small part of overall economic output. Not only does evidence show that lower taxes boosts economic growth, it also shows that cutting government spending, especially welfare spending, does the same. But this will have to wait for another video. When it comes to economic growth, there are certainly more factors at play than just tax rates. Things like regulations, the rule of law, protection of property rights, financial stability and more. But all things being equal, lower taxes does mean more growth. So it is a fact that tax cuts are good for the economy. I discuss this further in my video, The Truth About Trickle Down Economics, but hopefully this video has cleared any doubt that you may have had. Emma Alberici's article flat out denies known economic reality, and her only argument can be summed up as follows. Uh, like, nah, uh, someone once said that's not true, so, uh, not true, and, um, deducting business costs is like avoiding taxes and stuff, and, um, the only tax any company pays is like corporate income tax, and you're a racist. There is so much evidence to prove lower corporate taxes equals high wages, more investment, and more economic growth that it is ridiculous that we are even still having this debate. If I were to go over all the solid empirical evidence, this video would take forever. If you are interested in further reading, I'll link to all the sources used in this video as well as others below. The fact is, we have academic evidence, real world evidence, and it's just common sense. Think about it, would your life be better if you kept more of your own money? So what if everyone kept more, wouldn't that be great for everyone? In fact, Corporations pay no tax regardless of the rate. Taxes are paid by workers through lower wages, shareholders through lower dividends and share prices, or by customers through higher prices. Corporations only ever pay tax on paper. Every single cent of tax is ultimately paid for by one individual or another. The debate is over. The science is settled. No real economist would take Alberici's horrendous article seriously. I'm sure she could find plenty of people claiming the title of economist to support her, but that's the reason economics has so little respect with the wider public. It's a complicated field that political activists like Emma Alberici use to push their agenda instead of focusing on what we know to be true. Her final paragraph highlights just how bad this article is. Yet today, the BCA and its high-profile members like Mr. Joyce are insisting on a company tax cut that would blow a massive hole in the government's revenues and push the budget and national debt further into the red. So why don't we, you know, cut spending? You know, the whole other half of a government budget? Given the fact that there's strong evidence to suggest that lower government spending would also lead to a stronger economy, surely this would be part of a real economist report. Then again, I guess spending is locked in by a force of nature stronger than God. The force of nature known as, vote for us and we'll spend taxpayer money on you. Not to mention the evidence that suggests lower taxes would see higher revenues anyway. It's also worthy of note that Emma Alberici is directly funded by the taxpayer. Is it any wonder she ignores this solution? Which brings us back to the headline where she decries the tax cut because companies aren't paying tax. Question for you, Emma. If companies aren't paying tax, why the hell do you care about giving them a tax cut? Chief Economics Correspondent at the ABC, people. Chief Economics Correspondent. Hi everyone, thanks 
as always for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my stuff if you like. You can always go and check out my other work and, and if you enjoy that, subscribe. Click the bell as well so that you can get those notifications. Don't forget I did link to all those research articles and papers and things in the description or on my minds page. So if you do want to go and read a little bit more than, than you can and hopefully I'll see you around.